call the meeting of the Buell City Council meeting to order at Buell City Hall on August 3rd, 2021. Ryan, please take the roll. Councilor Landon. Here. Councilor Marcus. Here. Here, Claire. Here. I'm going to move reports from department heads to later on when we get to the fire hall discussion, uh, which will be item 7B. So we'll have the department head uh, meeting then seeing no other department head here. Four, council additions to the agenda. First one I'm gonna make is 7A plus, change order number four. That will be right after the capital improvement project update. And then I'm also going to add 7A++, a resolution 21-44 IRRRB grant application, or resolution, excuse me. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Also moved. Moved by John. Is there support? I'll support. Support by Stewart. Any further comment? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. We'll now move in into the Citizens Forum. Prior to the Citizens Forum, I'm just going to go through um, Citizens Forum guidelines. Uh, number one, speakers must be recognized by the presiding officer before speaking and are limited to three minutes for comment. When multiple speakers appear to speak on the same comic, com topic, comments should not be repetitive. The presiding officer may request speakers to appoint a spokesperson. Three, speakers must sign up prior to speak and provide a name and a brief summary of the subject matter they wish to address. The sign-up sheet will be available to start a city council meeting, which I now have. And we do have five people signed up. Number four, speakers must direct the remarks toward the presiding officer. Speakers shall not use obscene, profane, or threatening language, nor conduct, them, nor conduct themselves in a threatening, loud, or boisterous manner that disrupts the conduct of the meeting or the security of the public. Six, speakers are required to follow the direction of the presiding officer. Seven, speakers who do not follow the direction of the presiding officer will be warned that further disruptive con conduct will result in removal from the meeting. After a warning, if the conduct continues, the presiding officer may ask the speaker to leave. If the speaker refuses, to follow the direction of the presiding officer, the presiding officer may remove the speaker through any lawful means. Eight, council will generally not respond at the same meeting where an issue is initially raised by a member of the public. Matters raised for the first time by members of the public will generally be referred to staff for further research and possible report or action at a future council meeting. So that brings us to the first person, Laura Peterson, Park Development, you're up. Thank you. I'm here on behalf of a petition committee, including Sherry Swanson, Laura Madrava, Randy Towner, LaVon Godin, and myself to present Mayor Claridge and Councilors Lehman and Marcus, a petition signed by 268 residents, eligible voters of Bewell, asking that the council table the unilateral decision to develop any portion of Burton Park and adjacent ball fields and allow the citizens of Buell to officially vote on it. I participated in many hours of signature gathering, and there's a large number of people that expressed opposition to this development, not only for what it means to lose the green space, but to also allow the contracted company, Casper Construction, to complete the work without the project going out to bid. I personally am confused by the development itself, I am 100% supportive of development of Buell. I understand the need to increase the tax base to support our town and keep taxes affordable. I am by no means against development. I just don't want the development to be of the area proposed. I feel that it's an easy way for the current council to say that they're keeping taxes low without actually seeing the big picture. Questions that have come up during my many hours of conversations with those that I've met through this process. Why limit the development to 10 lots? We own 65 acres behind the Buell and can develop, can develop those as we can afford. Why is the council stating that the reason the ball fields are a good area to develop is because they are being used? And then they talk of building a t-ball field, which why would we put money into a t-ball field if we don't currently use the fields that we have in place? The city lost their hat in the development of Stubbler Beach. Those lots are all sold. 
but were combined into double lots and given away at a cost of $500 each. How will the city ensure that this development won't go the same way? There's a lot to consider with this development or any development. My bottom line, our park is a peaceful, beautiful green space used by and admired by a lot of Beale citizens and those that don't even live in our community. There has been talk about making our park an inclusive park and adding features for any ability to use. This requires space, lots of space if you've done your research. It also requires time and money. In conclusion, I'd like to again reiterate that we, the committee, are presenting a petition signed by 268 Buleys, asking to be given a voice and a choice. Let us work together to better the Buell we have and create more desirable housing in areas that we are all okay with seeing developed. 15 seconds, just to Thank let you Thank you know. to the 268 people that chose to stand up for their right to choose what happens in their town, whether it affects them directly or not. Thank you to the council for your time and hearing my comments. Number two on the list, Sherry Swanson. I don't have written notes. Sorry, guys. I'm not as eloquent as you were, Laura, but I want to note that she has turned the ballots over to you, Ryan, for your inspection. We've looked at the legal documents we can find on how to petition. We made sure we didn't give out any false information. We had them notarized last night at the end of petitioning. We were out for a week running this. We didn't get every house, but with this number, we well exceeded the 20% required by law to do a petition. So with that said, I had asked you to talk to our attorney to find out because we need to know how best this petition moves forward and on what legal grounds. And I first questioned whether we could talk to the attorney, but in here it does say that we are allowed to consult the city attorney on specific legal advice. And so we would like to have that happen next so that we know that we move in a legal process with this, however that plays out. I'm not sure, John, but I know that you guys have a different vision than a lot of us do for the city, but I have no doubt that we all want the best for our community. And that being said, we've moved forward. We've tried not to give any false information when we've gone out petitioning. We want this clean. We just want to know that people have a voice in their community. We only have one park. And so if you would, I know you're eager to get going so this development could be up and running by next summer and we could be selling lots. And I know the extra income is good for our community. But I also know that we were committed to develop behind the school and it may be more expensive, but we could surely start the process and with Casper here dumping all that fill, we could sure, surely get a good foundation going to start something back there. That could be considered as an option if, if you see that the people of town really don't want to move forward on this. But in the meantime, there's question as to where we can go with this, whether it would be a reverse Referenda. Referenda or a special Possible election. Vote. Yeah, put, vote. Put One person is speaking at this time. Okay. I, I think I've said my piece and I thank you for listening. I will issue a receipt for the petition tomorrow. Thank you. I will put it in the mail where you can stop and pick it. Sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. Next speaker, number three, Ray Bagley. Good evening. My name is Ray Bagley, and I am a lifetime resident here in Buell. I've lived here most of my life. Um, I grew up in Buell, and I moved away a little bit in my late teens, early 20s, where I came back because I love this town. I know I have a family, a wife, three beautiful kids. My daughters aren't old enough to go up to the park by themselves, but a minimum of once a week, my son asks if him and his friends can go play, go play baseball or football. We can't use the school fields anymore, so that's where they go. I think you guys are making a mistake by getting rid of the ball fields. There's other lots in town that could be used or sold for development. I know there's a few lots on State Street by the, by the boat landing. I mean, that's a good advertisement. 
ring by the lake, boat landing, path block away. It's only probably enough room for three houses, but it's a start. And just like behind the school, why not do 10 at a time? If we're getting 25 phone calls a day to, to buy houses or to, to develop and deal, they're gonna go quick. That's so 25 a day. Thank you. Speaker number four is Kelly Gergen. Hi, I'm Kelly. And I just want to say, once a month, my, son, my stepson comes up here, and he loves going up to the park and playing baseball. And I don't know what else he's going to do when it gets taken away. Um, I just hope you guys take a second look and let us vote. Thank you. Number five, Nate Nygaard. Hello, Nate Nygaard, I live at 600 Seville Avenue here in town. I have lived in Buell almost my whole life and I've always called it home. My concern today is regarding our park, the park my mother coached softball at for many years. I have always enjoyed spending time up there, especially lately. Recently I started fostering a kid, and I see the benefits of having ball fields in town now more than ever. Lately, we have been getting kids together up there for small games. Just last month, we had 10 kids up there all playing a pickup game. We may not have a team in town now, but you never know what the future holds for us, and I would like to at least give our future a fair chance at it. We've already had enough we already don't have enough for our youth to do our own town. We don't need to take anything more away from them. Last meeting, Mr. Councilman Mark stated we have not put money into the park in over 20 years. That's a big shame. That's a long time to not take care of that park. So maybe it's time, and instead of taking some stuff away from it, we add to it. We fix one of the fields up there. We don't need to, I get that, but. We need to at least keep one and we can do something else. We don't need houses there. We need space for kids to run around and burn their energy. What happens if we do get more people in town? More people, more kids. What are we gonna do when we have more people in town? More kids, the space is gone. What are we gonna do if we have a 4th of July parade? We have the races up in the park like we always used to have when I was a kid. Where are they gonna run? They gonna run through the obstacle courses or what? I hope you guys will reconsider this horrible idea and give something back to the kids instead of taking away. Please do not sell our youth out just for a few houses. Thank you. Okay, Ryan, I'll give you this list for later. Okay, that now concludes the... Uh Citizens Forum. Now, in response to the petition that has been presented, pursuant to Minnesota statute 211-A subdivision 7, the petition will need to be submitted to the city administrator, clerk treasurer, which has been done. The city administrator in consultation with the city attorney will review the legal authority and sufficiency of the petition based on the laws of the state of Minnesota. So it's going to go next to our city attorney for his um, uh, well, more than review, I think uh, we want a lot of things coming from that. Uh, we'll have to look at the legality of that, everything that goes with it, and uh, the, uh, what actually a petition can or cannot do in the city of Buell, which it were governed by state statute. So state statute will drive this for us right now. Uh, we're not supposed to have questions on this picture, but I'll, I'll take one. All I was going to say is that I did see that in lieu of legal action, if the council makes a simple vote to reverse, that that would take care of it anyway. That's just another one. Okay. So with that, um, we thank you for all the comments, and we'll, we'll go from there. So. How many people did you guys... Mr. Rossi, you had a chance to speak. How many people did you guys talk to? We're moving on in the agenda. Doing this. Mr. Ross, if you're going to be disruptive, I'm going to call the police. Okay. 
Okay, moving on to the agenda. Um, no, I misplaced my agenda. <laughs> No, I took it out of the book. Uh -huh. Ryan, can I have an extra copy of the agenda? Oh, there I go. I got it. Never mind. It was under something. Okay, next is the consent agenda. 6A minutes, a regular city council meeting on July 13th, 2021. B, claims, payroll number 15, $14,736.85. Payroll number 16, $15,654.72. Payroll July, $2,000. Accounts payable, $111,629.58. For a grand total of $144,021.15. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion. Motion by Stuart. Is there support? Support. Support by John. Comments? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Next, we'll go to business. Capital Improvement Project. John, you're up. Okay. <clears throat> Update on the project. Uh, Jasper is uh, they're working on the water and sewer on Roberts Avenue now. Uh, they basically got all the infrastructure done on the north side of Pennsylvania Avenue. And now they're going to start heading down to the areas on the south side of Pennsylvania. We uh, actually did got, get some paving done today, so that was a good thing. Uh, Mine Street, Jones, Culver, they got one block of Mercer done, a few other miscellaneous areas. Um, and right now the schedule tentatively is to come back on Thursday and pave really on the county project being Pennsylvania Avenue. The county's really trying to get that ready for the first lift of blacktop. So hopefully and get Pennsylvania paved and uh, the rest of MRSA. They're pouring concrete and curb and stuff in town too, so that's all contingent. So we're waiting on the county for Pennsylvania Avenue. Yeah, that they're, far they're, yeah they're working on, right now they're physically laying concrete, so okay. they get that stuff done before they, okay. they put the paving, so. So that, 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 that's the uh, update. I, I do have a change order. I first, maybe I'll stop and see if there's any questions or comments on the, the rest of the progress of the project. They seem to have quite a few crews in town. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're going that, that one alley, boy, that's the concrete. John and I went by there today. And I think they're paving tomorrow, too, aren't they? Pardon me? They're paving tomorrow, too? No. Oh, yeah, we're going to, but oh. said let's. See if we can get Pennsylvania ready and come back. Oh, yeah. They've got a job in Virginia to kind of do so. And the weather's supposed to cooperate. It's been nice, so it's, we've been lucky overall. Well, Wednesday. We've got one rain day all, yeah. all summer long, so. I believe they were up in France location paving, too. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's good. Okay. So, is that it for any other questions on the overall general? Okay, and then let's go to 7A plus the change order number four, John. Yeah, what, we, what happened, we were uh, working on the alley uh, east of Roberts, uh, it's between Whiteside and Pennsylvania Avenue, and we ran into a, a speed line that was unknown. We didn't have it shown on our plans, and it was big. <laughs> Um, steam line encased in concrete and you know, we ran into, we had a lot of steam line abandonments and removals planned for the project and you know we've done a lot of that throughout the project so we had a contract a bait that needed to come in they actually have to abate the assessment off or asbestos off of the, the pipe so the contractor could get no proposal dispose of it. But this line is really in the way. This is really the toughest situation we ran into in town. Because one, it's in an alley and it's narrow. You know, we ran into steam lines on State Street and Jones, you know, because it was so much wider, we were able to kind of, you know, move some things around and things like that. So there's two options to deal with the steam line, and both of them are expensive. Um, one, 
is to uh, remove the steam line, and that's where I don't have a final cost on this, but I, I got some additional information this afternoon. Uh, physically remove the steam line, which would be taking it out, out of the ground, cutting it up, we have to and, and case it, and then ship it to some disposal site. And that's how you get rid of this stuff. And the cost to remove the steam lines and ship it and dispose of it, some disposal facility in the Duluth area is about $40,000. The second option that we were working with Casper is that we can move the water and sewer over maybe to the east side of the alley. They figured their production would be cut in half. So uh, this is about 400 feet of pipe, so they, their bits for a water line, for example, was $69 a foot. So it would be almost twice that because it would take them twice as long to do the work. So that cost for both the water and sewer is about $55,000. Um, those are really our only two options. I think we're working on a number. It seems like removing is going to be the option. I just don't have the final number for that. So The first option you gave us. Yeah. So isn't it's the water line, on, water line on the west side of the steamboat and the sewers on our the steam line is on the west side of the alley, so we're trying to push everything to the east side, but that's where the old power this, lines are too, so it makes, it makes it a little bit tough. Yeah, but the old sewer is on the east side of the steam line. Yeah, so we're going to put both the water and yeah, sewer on the east side just because there's a little bit more room than there is on the west side. What's your recommendation, John? Um, that we approve the work, but I don't have a final number. We need to get this approval by the USDA folks also. So okay. I think we can, I think the worst case scenario is the 55,000, you know, to leave it in place and just replace the, or move the water. But it's gonna take them more time to do that. That's why the additional cost for the contractor. And if we can get some final numbers in the next couple of days, maybe we can do the removal phase, which would be a little bit cheaper then. So, the recommendation is we approve the change order. I know it's hard, and we don't know what the exact dollar amount is, but I think it should be a re recommended to approve it and send it down to USDA Rural Development for them to review and comment on it also. So we would approve option number one? No? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. if option number one, I would, we really, really want to approve the least costly alternative, but I don't have the final numbers for option one. We were expecting this cost of disposal of it down in two areas would be a lot more spendy than and the numbers started coming back. It seems a little bit more reasonable. Even Casper thought it'd be cheaper to do the to remove it than to you know get delayed on the thing. So I'll recommend the cheapest alternative. I guess we're we're kind of leaning towards option one. So I don't know how you make a motion. Well, we can make the motion to approve to approve the least, yeah. it, it, the less cost yeah. alternative. Yeah. And I will make that motion. Is there support? I'll support. Support. So, John, you'll just keep Ryan informed and us informed as we move along. And yeah. once again, we want the, and they're both, uh, they're both just as good as an option, right? Yes. Okay. John, what's uh, the USDA going to, are they going to deny anything or? Well, they, I, I don't think they'll deny it. I mean, there isn't an option. To, I mean, their option, the third option is to do nothing. And we've got an old clay line and an old cast iron line in that alley. So, I mean, there is that option, but we wouldn't want to. I don't anticipate them not approving it. They just got to justify all the costs and everything. That just sometimes... They like to even do things sometimes, time and material, to make it the most cost-effective way to do it too. So that's that's what we have to work with them on. Just for just so the council is aware, every change order needs to go through the USDA. It could be for a thousand bucks. It still has to go, and um, okay. I will still have to sign off on this change order once I see the final. Price. This runs that whole alley. That vault runs the whole alley. Yeah, from from white side. On okay. south yep. end of Pennsylvania, on the north. north. Okay. Actually, not to Pennsylvania. There's that little short alley where it turns. Yep. Yeah, yep. that's where. Actually, that old sewer line went underneath a couple of those garages on the Pennsylvania. That's where the old one. So we okay. rerouted it through that alley, which 
Okay. Know, but there was a steam line there. But. Okay, there's a motion to take the uh, most cost effective method to do this. Is there support? Support by John. Stuart. I have Stuart, do you want some motion? Okay. Okay. It's already passed. <laughs> oh, that's for okay. a vote. All those in favor of the motion say by saying aye. I thought I made the motion. Okay, aye. Never mind. Aye. Okay. Next one is 7A++. Approve uh, resolution 21-44. Ryan, do you want to just update everyone on that, please? Sure. Um, Councilor Marcus and myself met with the representative from the IRRR on, on Monday. Um, and I came off of a conversation with the commissioner. Um, and through our conversations, um, they've, they've committed funds about 500000 so far to our overall water and sewer project and infrastructure. Plus, in our second phase, we did have a portion into uh, the development of the park. After talking to their rep, um, they do have funds available, and we are in a good position to do that, to basically get another 137000 from them to support everything going on in the city. So... On that, um, and I will have to give credit to Councillor Marcus for reaching out to the commissioner on that. Um, another 137,000 for going on is very good for the city. Uh, is there a motion to approve uh, resolution 21 44? I'll make it. Go ahead. I'll make it. Motion by Stewart. Is there support? Support. Support by John. Further comment or discussion or question? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion's this, carried. This mayor resolution needs to be a roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to the uh, roll call. Councilor Lane? Yes. Councilor Marcus? Yes. Mayor Clarish? Yes. Resolution passed. Ryan, do you want to get, let's yep. see if Ted and Josh want to come in? Hey, gentlemen, we're having a, uh, this can be your uh, little time to talk to, but then we're going to discuss the Fire Hall Edition update and everything like that. So well, if you guys want to start with that, and then if we have any questions, we'll ask them. Uh, well, I think Ryan and uh, Ted and myself and the uh, architectural company and them have met over there, so I know that'll be brought up later. So um, I think we're looking at a possible meeting Thursday again with them to see where everything's landing and um, informational and yeah, so far so good. So mm -hmm. definitely are uh, excited and we need the room over there. So. Are you still talking budget-wise close to it? Yes, and I think we'll find out for sure okay. during that meeting, um, you know, where the numbers. We did, you know, look at some possible additions and then easy, you know, takeaway. But it's one of those things where, you know, it, they were there. It was easier to get the, the quotes now and and go through that to see where this is going to land. And just for the, the council, um, you know, like one of the ad alternatives we were looking at is if you've been over there, the cement pad that's inside or right outside the pipe is kind of sunk in, so there's a big lip, so it may make sense to look at just replacing that whole that whole portion. Also, um, the building's getting in need of a paint job, so to match everything, that's going to be another option. Are you discussing that with architectural resources? Yeah. yeah. The, all, the, all of these, okay. All of that, so yeah. So yeah, the, the memo was just intended to kind of be an update for the council where we are. Um, I've also talked with Engineer Jamnik too, just to see if there's any utility upgrades over there. We know one of the sides of like the ADA complaint curbing at the end is getting a little worn. So, you know, something that might cost us a hundred bucks now might be worth fixing into it and all at once. So we'll, we'll be all inclusive. All of the issues that we have yes. that you've discussed with Ryan, that yep. you've discussed with us as a council, we'll, we'll make sure everything so we can wrap it up in one complete package. That would be ideal, yeah. Okay. Yep. And we're still hoping to have it done this fall, correct? <laughs> uh, I mean, sooner than better. Well, it's, it's, it's in architectural it. resources yep. kind of uh, court right now to get get all this put together to get out for a bit. So. And I explained to, you know, as we all see with, you know, there's, it's hard to get just about anything right now. So right. 
we understand that there's going to be a, a, a longer delay than what we anticipated, but um, as long as the ball's rolling down the court, we're happy. So. Well, so are we. So <laughs> ideally, we have that ready for you Perfect. winter time. Um, the only other thing I was going to bring up is we did add a new member uh, to our roster last night, um, and we have one more coming on board. I um, just went for the final checks, but Lyle did check out, which is a, a huge asset to us and the city, being as though he's working right here. Um, so he's going to get up to speed here quickly, get him enrolled in Firefighter 1 and 2 classes. Um, and again, to have, have somebody in town that can respond is, is an asset to everybody. So uh, it's, we're happy with that. We're always looking for more. What does that bring our, our membership up to? With, uh, when 18, Karen comes on, it'll be, we'll be down to 16. 16? We did part ways with somebody that needed okay. to be inactive and, and just couldn't get back to okay. active. But no, that sucks. 16, okay, seems. It's a sliding scale every year. <laughs> well, we'll just keep going. Luckily that you're getting people to fill in and replace and, and do whatever. Anything else? That's Any all. questions from the council? Thank you. Right, thank you. Next, we'll move on to 7C, the public hearing wellhead protection. Ryan, do you want to start at the top with that? Sure. So the city is kind of nearing the end of um, basically redoing our wellhead protection plan, which is a requirement of the Minnesota Department of Health. Part of um, that kind of sit or stipulation that we need to have a public hearing to discuss the plan. Um, Mike's drop in from rural water will be up for that meeting to kind of give an overview of the plan, answer any questions, um, but the public hearing is just kind of standard operating procedure and something that's that's required in the development of the plan. So just looking for a motion to schedule that public hearing as part of the regular council meeting on October 5th. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion by Stuart. All support by John. Yep. Okay. Any further comment or questions? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. There's some we do every 10 years, I think it is. Is it? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, yeah. I believe it's every five years now so. because. So. Okay, now we'll move on to uh, 7D, Recreation Board Appointments. At this time, um, I will make the motion to appoint Colleen Port, Randy Towner, and Tammy Helen Towner to the Rec Board. Does that fulfill it up now, Ryan? Yep, that okay. would be a complete okay. five-member board, and I'll get in contact with them. And also. Councilman Carter is on that also, correct? Okay. So that will fill it out. We will have five people. Okay, there's a motion to hire uh, to appoint those three people. Is there support? I'll support. Support by John. Further comment or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Next is... 7E, Council Appointment. We have five candidates, Cassandra James, Taryn Burnett, David Johnson, uh, Daryl Jean Matthew, and Renee Leffler are requesting appointment to the Council. Now there are five people, unfortunately we can only pick one person. So with that, um, I would encourage the, the four people that, are, that don't get appointed to, we have an election in less than uh, roughly 16 months, and we may have a primary based on how many people apply, so it could be a lot sooner to have a primary. So at this point, I'm making a motion to appoint Daryl Jean Matthew to fill the remaining 17 months of former Councilor Paul Keekley's term. My reason for that are his previous 12 years experience on the City Council, his involvement in the community including 12 plus years on the Planning and Zoning Committee as well as being the Chair, and as many years of service on the Buell Economic Development Association which he was just elected Chair of also. These experiences will be needed on the Council for the various issues and actions that we'll be having coming up in the near future. Is there support? I support. Support by John. Further comment? I have some comment. Yeah, go ahead, Stuart. Uh, to 
your appointment. I would, I'm not agreeing with your appointment on basis that people voted, didn't vote for that person in the last election that they had, so we didn't win. Um, and it would be good to see new faces, new diversity in the council. So with that, I'm not, I think we should recommend something else, but that's your pro, that's okay. your appointment. Okay, next, um, is there a motion? Um, all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign? Aye. Okay. Two to one, it passes. Jean, Daryl Jean Matthew will fill the remaining 17 months of that seat. Okay. Next, we're on to counselor's comments. Stuart, you're up. Um, I haven't taken any part in Rams meeting, but our new executive director took, uh, come on board on August 1st, um, which is Ida Rukavina, or Ida Rukavina. Um, so we'll be having a meeting this month at the end of the month for Rams. Uh, I had Ryan do some uh, investigation on the lots and homes additions that we've done in town. I don't know, you can help me out a little bit, Ryan, but like on the Stubbler addition, we have 12 homes. The total project, the ARC, the city's cost was $368,000. At 26,400 estimated property tax value for that addition, based on a 200,000 market value home. Um, and what you have here is thir almost 14 years to break even on that project. And then like on Woodbridge, asked, or Woodbridge and Whiteside, we have 76 homes. Uh, the city's cost for that project is almost 500,000, 493,000. That's gonna be $23,500 in property tax value for the city for our revenue. And you have in here, it's 20 years to break even on that, Ryan? You know, taking into account grants, assessments, um, you know, basically just trying to show that, you know, these are long lasting investments to the city. We do make money on them. It's not a loss to the city, whether it's a new development or investing in current areas of town. And then this new park development the total cost of the project is $287,000. The grants that we have received are $150,000 from the county and $137,000 from IRRR already. Total cost is zero. To break even is zero. Just for informational purposes. And that's all estimated um, market value owned. So. It's a little information that these lots, additions, bring in revenue. So, whatever it's worth. Well, that's good, solid information. It's good for the public. It's also good for us to hear that uh, from you again, too. Anything else, Stuart? That's it. Okay. John? Uh, I'd like to just comment on the people that applied for the position of council. Um, uh, all of them were qualified. It's just that I thought, Gino, for what we have on the table with our infrastructure, we're looking at a new water tank and our development, uh, he has uh, the knowledge to step right in with his experience. And, you know, we don't have to delay anything and explain what's going on or what we're doing. He already has that knowledge. So the people that did sign up for the position, um, yeah, I mean, I read your, you know, your stuff and it was good. But that's the reason I voted the way I voted. So. Anything else, John? Um, and, you know, like I 
see on that park project, the option is up to the rec board if they want to put that, I think the best place for the baseball field is in the corner where the skateboard area is that nobody uses. That's not true. Well, oh. we're, we're not, uh, this isn't public discussion, though. This oh, is uh, Councilor Commons. He's lying. Well, actually, this was brought up by Car that's enough. Uh, Councilor Carter, so that's why it's there. The rec board will determine if there's going to be a, a, a field yeah, it's where a, it's going to go. Yeah. It's on that committee now. You have the charge for that. I don't know if that's it. Okay. Uh, this week's mayor comments are in direct response to uh, Councillor Carter's Facebook questions about why specific lots were never developed south of President Avenue, including one uh, one behind me, one behind John, and one behind two of the, our neighbors. Okay. The answer to that question is quite simple. It was not cost effective. A previous council prior to this, several years ago, determined that only four of the seven plotted lots behind this, this area, south of President Avenue, were buildable. And the cost to develop those four lots has increased substantially since the engineer's $160,000 estimate in 2006. So it's up over $200,000 now. Just develop those four lots, so I want people to understand that. The lots facing President Avenue, one of which I bought, which John bought and the other neighbors on there bought, were $5,000 per lot. This included sewer, water, electrical, and future curb, gutter, and asphalt. I bought the lot and constructed a home along with four other residents. I was the second to the last one to build one, a house there, so just to let you know. Now, I want to go back to that land that's behind there. This goes way back to a special council meeting for the city of Buell on June 18th, 2013. They discussed the sale of those lots, those four lots behind those four properties. And I'm just gonna read to you item B from that. Sale of lots. Discussion centered on what restrictions, if any, would be put on lot six, block two. One person wanted to buy a lot. Damien, and it wasn't myself because I wasn't there yet, and John wasn't there yet. Damien first edition to Buell and what the sale price would be. The person reiterated that he would still like to purchase the lot. Motion by Swanson to sell lot six, seven, and eight, block two, Damien edition to Buell for $500 a lot with the adjoining property owners having the right of first refusal. Supported by Matthew. Motion failed. Voting nay, White, Matthew, Larson, Swanson, and Pulford. Then a motion by White that if these lots are put up for sale by the City Council that the adjacent property owner will have the right of first refusal. Supported by Swanson. Motion carried unanimously. Motion by Pulford to allow the adjoining property owners to use lots 6, 7, 8, and 9. Those is all four lots there. To allow those lots with the restriction that the residents can use those as if they're their own, but that they cannot put a permanent structure on these lots. This was after the council had declared them unbuildable because they couldn't afford at $160,000 to run sewer, water, and electricity back there for four lots. So they had declared it unbuildable. So I, I'm, I'm just trying to give a history lesson to the people because this has really lit up Facebook with uh, accusations back and forth and people saying this person has three lots, that person has six lots, whatever. So that's where that came from. Okay, that brings me back to uh, Councilor Carter's question, valid question, which created a firestorm on Facebook on how the mayor and the councilman obtained the lots behind them, namely lots eight and nine, for $100 a lot. First, the lots were not purchased by members of council. Yes, they were purchased by family members who have a vested interest in the properties. The city is given statutory authority to acquire and or sell real property without advertising or going for public bid. For example, last year incoming Councilor Carter purchased 40 acres of city land by the cemetery because a council determined the land had no value for the city since it was outside of city limits and did not have any uh, utilities running to it. 
Previous and current councils have also followed a process formalized by resolution to offer available land to the adjacent property owners if it is determined to benefit the city. In this case, the city is benefiting from the property taxes being paid on those lots. The council prior to selling those lots, along with others in Damien addition to the adjacent landowners, determined that the only benefit for the city would be additional revenue generated from property taxes. Previous members of city council have also had relatives purchase property from the city. Take for example lot 115-0040-00279, which is a two acre piece of property located near the water tower off County Road 125. Multiple parties were interested in this piece of property. After multiple council discussions, it was determined to list the two acre property as one lot rather than planning it out for four multiple lots. The property was ultimately purchased by a relative of the city member of the city council. Unfortunately, the purchaser never, never fulfilled their obligation to build a single family home or commercial business on two acre property. I am not casting dispersion on any of the above people or city officials, but just rationalizing how the city sold that property, how I followed and we have followed examples used previously in buying city property. I also would like to follow up with, I'm going to pick on Damien Edition. That's where I happen to live. That's where these lots were. This is just for people's information. Previous mayors and councils going back many years and in and, and recent years have sold buildable lots for anywhere from $1 to $500. As a result, Franklin Avenue has one house with one unbuildable lot and two other buildable lots. Another house on Franklin also has two additional building lots and three, uh, has an additional two building lots and three unbuildable lots. One house has three buildable lots total and another one house with two buildable lots. Uh, previous, the other one, I'm sorry, was two other lots plus the house. So you can see th it's, it's moved around a lot as far as um, city councils, and I, I'm going back some 20 years on some of this and some as recent as uh, five, six, seven years ago. President has one house with four lots, one house potential develop, development, but they were purchased a long time ago, and two unbuildable lots behind. Pierce has one house with two buildable lots and four houses with each having a buildable lot. So there's multiple lots. There's many houses with dual lots sold by the city over the last 20 years. So when we looked at this, we followed past practice. And Jefferson also has one house with a buildable lot and another house with another building lot. So that's how we, we followed, that's how we came to put those lots up for sale. The city, uh, by previous action back to 2013, said the right of first refusal goes to people adjoining that property. And that's how all this property that I just talked about was sold by councils over the previous up to maybe 15, 16 years. I'm not sure. That's all I have for uh, Councilor Commons. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Motion by Stewart. Stewart. Support, support by John. All those in favor of the motion, same by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Meeting adjourned.